It's another episode of Wearable Today with a backbeat. I find your lack of disturbance disturbing. Anyway, we've got a great show for you. It is another episode of Wearable Today, episode number 90, Earthly Lesson. Oh, I'm sorry, Human's Earthly Lesson. Gotta look that one up. Anyway, we've got a great show for you because it's all about the shoes, all about the shoes, all about the shoes. And, you know, I pull off my shoes, but, you know, then my feet, you know, you don't want that. But anyway, the whole point is it's all about the shoes. And, of course, we got Luke Luca here. Uh, of course, we've got Luke Wallace, Luke, Luke whatever. Um, we're going to talk about LG Urbane coming back. We're going to talk about the Movado Bold. We'll talk about Google Glass and its new rumors that are coming out and all that other good stuff. This is episode 90, Human's Earthly Lesson of Wearable Today. All about the shoes. Brought to you by Cashfly. Go over to C A C H E F L Y dot com for more. Get that 14 day free trial. And over by Maker Max. Over at Max.Maker dot Max.Maker.com. Anyway, how you doing? My name is Jeffrey Powers, as this will tell you. Boom! There we go. I'm Jeffrey Powers. Uh, you can find me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. And Jeff at wearabletoday.com, dot com, dot com. And as, oh, you're, you're anxious to do it. So, Bertie, tell everybody about yourself. Sure, now it doesn't say anything. <laughs> no, now, she, now she's being quiet. This is Bertie, everybody. And Bertie's here uh, every week doing the podcast, and she's excited to be here. Uh, I am her translator, uh, Luke Wallace. Translator. Yeah, uh, yeah you can. <laughs> Find me on Twitter at Luke Luca. Uh, you can email me at, for the show at Luke at Wearable Today. Yes, I know. And you, Birdie, at WearableToday.com. Oh, I got I to gotta figure out if I actually uh, set up Birdie's web, uh, email address still. Everyone, please hold off. Do not email Birdie right this second. We will have to wait for just a little bit. Well, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can do it if you want. So, so basically, a couple, a couple uh, housekeeping notes here. First of all, uh, the website we moved. The website uh, it's on its new host. I think everything's back up and running. There's still a couple issues I need to work out, but I will get that fixed out there um, and go from there. So if you see any problems, like, for instance, the follow buttons, there's, there's supposed to be a Twitter icon and a Facebook icon, and, of course, it's not there. But I did a lot of changes, like... There was a lot of stuff that still said Twig on it and still said This Week in Google Glass. And, and all, you know, you go to This Week in Google Glass.com, it'll take you there. I want it to be all wearable today. So I've been going back and forth and uh, crossing all the I's and dotting all the T's and, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, getting that up and running. So, secondly, I want to kind of want to put this out here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, last week we talked about Android Wear and the cellular service, and we focused mainly on watches. But I wanted to kind of make this mention that, because uh, somebody brought it up to my attention, it's, it's, it's more than just watches. I mean, Android Wear, think about it now, you could actually have cellular service for whatever Google Glass 2.0 is. You could have cellular service for if your shirt has Android Wear in it or, you know, whatever device has Android Wear, there could be a cellular service for it. So um, uh, somebody brought to my attention, and I'd like to thank you guys f uh, for, for doing that. Um, I believe it was... T I can't remember the name. Anyway, the whole point is... That uh, you know, it, it's going to be more than just watches, and uh, I wanted to let absolutely. You know, so, all right. Well, with that said, let's get into our segment that we go <laughs> big news, little arms. <laughs> do that again. Do that again. Let's see. If, no, no. Do it again. Do it again. You want to see it with the cup? You want to see it? No. Watch. Way? Watch what Birdie did. Go. Go. Do it. <laughs> Birdie's like going, what's in that cup? I want to, I want to know what's in that cup. He's like, is there, is there, is there something in there for me? Like, is there, is there something in there? So anyway, she's like, what are you doing? She's like, don't, don't do that. <laughs> All right, let's let's start. It up. <laughs> uh, we're serious stuff here. Yeah. So first up, we've got that rumor has it that Google is working on a couple new versions of Google Glass. And one of them doesn't have a display. 
That's right, Bertie. The primary interface would be auditory, where you speak to it and it responds back to you through an earpiece. This would be very similar. Luke. I'm your father, Luke. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, I hear that. It says, well, so this would be very similar to the Motorola Hint, which is what's shown in the article there, because they don't actually have a picture, obviously, of the new Google Glass. Yeah. Um, but the Motorola Hint, Motorola Hint came out last year, uh, and it had that same kind of interface where you talk to it, and it talks back to you through a single mono earpiece. Uh, and we'll, of course, keep you updated, so stay tuned here to Wearable Today as this story develops. Stay tuned to Wearable Today. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I I hate uh, I I'm, I'm really starting to get bugged by Google Chrome and their little caching programs. So this isn't lined up, and and now shock rate, shock shockwave flash is not responding. Whatever. Mm. Anyway, let's move on here. Last week we talked about the LJ, LG Urbane LTE uh, uh, watch debuting, the cellular watch, uh, first Android Wear cellular. Um, the Verge is a report, actually several reports, but we got this from The Verge. Um, LG has decided to halt sales. Uh, at the time we found it was, it was halting, and from what I understand, they have stopped production of the Urbane 2 Watch 2 altogether. There will not be an Urbane Watch 2 out there. Um, the, uh, and there's no information as to what the glitch is, um, and no s set date for if LG is going to come out with another cellular version, which I'm assuming they're going to come out with another cellular version because, you know, that's, it's, it's, Im yeah, it's, it's important, I would say, you know, so anyway. Yeah, they were the first ones to do it, so why wouldn't they launch, why wouldn't exactly. they want this thing to come out? They got all the support from Google and explaining how this is the first thing and it's huge and which makes yeah, me no. wonder if it was the cellular service that caused the problem uh, in in the watch but we're not sure <laughs> yeah. um and i you know maybe there's been some reports since then we should uh we'll, we'll check up and and uh uh we'll we'll give you an update uh when i get back from london so uh but if you want to read more on that we've got the the link over at theverge.com also up from the verge the Movado Bold Motion is another smartwatch without a screen. We've mentioned these kinds of devices several times in the past few months, but this one is a little different in that it does have a standard analog watch on top. It uses LEDs and vibrations underneath to signal the user and retails for $695. As far as fitness tracking goes, it can track steps, but no blood oxygen level or heart rate monitoring will be found here. The device works with both iOS and Android devices. And, Bir and Birdie. And Birdie. And Birdie. And Birdie. Good Birdie. Good Birdie. Good Birdie. Oops, 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 oops. Birdie. All right, let's move on here. Um, you know, uh, Will the Apple Watch be a hot commodity for this Black Friday? Analysts do think so. Uh, with poor sales since its release, many expect a surge for the holiday season. Uh, as we have uh, noted here on the Tech Times, one of the post uh, mini articles inside this uh, this all encompassing page or whatever you want to call it. So uh, they're expecting a surge for the holiday season. Apple hasn't mentioned if they're going to be participating in the sale weekend yet, but Best Buy has already announced a one hundred dollar discount, which I understand you can get now. If you want to get yourself an Apple Watch, so uh, they start at what three ninety nine or four ninety nine? Uh, three ninety nine, I think, for the absolute okay. cheapest one. So then, might be you might be getting a well. I I bet you that three ninety nine is probably. I don't know. It might be a hundred dollars off. So check it out with Best Buy on there. Uh, if if Apple does do uh, a Black Friday sale. Uh, the real question is, will the watch have enough of a deep discount to make any weight on a Black Friday worth it? Um, and, and that goes for any wearable out there. So uh, I don't know. Are you making any plans to do any Black Friday shopping or anything like that? Uh, maybe. Um, I do have some plans already for that day, but um, maybe. The, these fitness wearables being... 30, 40% off or, well, maybe $30 off or $40 off um, is a pretty good amount, uh, especially if you're wanting to get somebody a gift and uh, maybe you can get the next level up. A lot of times that's what's neat about it is like, well, I only wanted to spend 150 bucks, 
but today the one that's normally 200 is only 150 so i'll just yeah. get them that one and then you know you get a little better gift are you sure you wouldn't get it for yourself and then just give them a hand me down uh yeah i'd probably not do that um i don't have a lot of fitness trackers so but you know okay well i'd love to show you this last article but freaking fricker frack and freaker frocking freak freaking freak freak freak. the page isn't loading up oh no you're mashable yeah no it's it's just i don't know there's something going on it's it's I I preload these pages, but there's the uh, it's Chrome is doing this recache thing, and now it's killing out. There's a cute puppy. Uh yes. I missed a cute puppy. A little wheelchair for a for yeah. a little puppy that has only two legs. Yeah, even and your. So, and I, I know I'm, I still got connection going on here, so. Birdie only has two legs. What? Yeah. So that's true. That's yeah, true. Already only has the two legs. So anyway, so. it's a yeah. It was a, a picture of a cute little puppy, and uh, I don't know what the heck's going on here. This I've never had it happen like this before. You kill. It's too cute of a puppy. There we go. <laughs> it's such a cute puppy. There we go. It's an adorable two-legged puppy getting fitted for a three D printer wheel, printed wheelchair. We were not going to deny you the cuteness here. We were not going to deny you the cuteness of the I puppy. must see this little puppy. Must see the little puppy. It's, it, you know. Sorry, Birdie. You, you, you know, there's there's only so many cute. And, you know. Was that me that made that sound? Did you hear a sound? I heard that coming from your side. Interesting. Anyway. Please, please turn off all cellular devices. I, I don't know. It wasn't a cellular device there. That was, that was the weird part. I don't know. Okay. There we go. All right. So there's the cute puppy. Oh, look at that puppy. He's got a little duct tape on the bottom, but uh, he's growing in his 3D printed wheelchair, um, which is pretty cool. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a disappointing. It's a, it's a cute but disappointing ending for Big News Little Arms. <laughs> uh, I did that in purpose. <laughs> so, Luke, how have you been? How's your week? It's been good. Uh, getting ready for the big Thanksgiving holiday coming up this week. Yep, Turkey Day. So you know what that means? You eat every bird in sight. Uh-oh. Well, no, we don't eat birdie. Birdie's... Wait, what? No, no, birdie, birdie doesn't count as a bird. So yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, no. So uh, we'll be visiting family uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday. It should be good. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, anything happened this last week or? So one interesting story, not really where tech related, but well, this kind of was people... kind of where tech related. I mean, so uh, yeah. It's been mentioned a few times in the past that uh, I, I'm i part of the 501st, technically the Rebel Legion side, the good guys side. Um, anyway, we did this event back on Halloween uh, where we went out to a, um, uh, what's it, a museum, uh, aeros uh, aerospace museum, I guess you'd call it. You went to see uh, Aerosmith? Frontiers Flight Museum. It wasn't, it wasn't Aerosmith. Not Aerosmith. Okay. Aerospace. Aerospace. Aerosmith Aerospace, Aerospace Museum. Aeros okay. uh, Air and Space Museum, maybe, is the right term. I don't know. Um, okay. But anyway, there was a photographer there, and he was taking pictures, he said, for some little local uh, airline magazine, you know, like a aviation magazine for the aviation industry. Okay. And it was like, sure, whatever. You want to get some pictures? That's fine. Yeah. Well, then we found out that apparently... We made the cover of Rolling Stone. D no, oh. no, not of Rolling Stone. Of DFW News Flash. Of what? Uh, yeah, exactly. I've never heard of it either. Um, but it's an it's a uh, it's a magazine that's available at DFW Airport, probably. Um, I think that's where uh, this guy saw it. A friend of mine uh, posted this and said, "Hey, I got this 
magazine. I think that's Luke on the cover. And uh, yep, that's definitely me at the um, in front of the Apollo 7 module at this uh, Frontiers of Flight Museum. And so that, that's uh, that's me and then Eric in the Stormtrooper outfit uh, and then Cameron there uh, in the TIE Fighter. And of course, Phil as um, Darth Vader. I mean, I recognize those guys, but you know, I know yeah. they're not easily recognizable by everybody oh. else. But okay, cool. yeah. Let's just move on. Speaking of TIE Fighters. <laughs> oh, that was a TIE Fighter. Yeah, you, you got some cool pictures on your Facebook page that I finally got into. Well, He's been I hiding a Facebook a page years, for I me. guess I should call you a Facebook friend. Yeah. Don't... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so now, now, I, now I, I didn't even know he was on Facebook. I, I thought you were Google Plus all the way, but apparently you were on Facebook and you were just hoarding it from me, so. I don't think you ever asked if I was on Facebook. Yeah, um, I did. Oh, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I didn't. I probably didn't. So it's okay. Anyway, it's a, well. That's so a, that's a cool. You week. probably didn't, and I probably just didn't mention it. And yeah, <laughs> whatever. So yeah, whatever. That was kind of fun. I, so I'm I'm going to try to get a copy of that. I'm not going to the airport anytime this week. But I know some people that are, and they're going to try to pick me up a copy. So um, if you're going through there and you see me on the cover of a magazine, uh, pick one up, and I'll uh, autograph it next time we meet. I'm not going to to uh, yeah, I'm not going to Dallas. Yeah, that's where you live. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that was fun. What about you? What have you been up to? Um. This last week, well, you know, it's been a fun week. I've uh, been doing uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of everything. Of course, uh, the big, the big thing is, uh, and of course, show notes. Uh, next week, no show. Well, actually, no show for the next two weeks because I'm going to Cholio, London, England. Uh, yeah, we will be there for a couple weeks. We will be eating tea and drinking crumpets, and uh, having a lot of fun. So, uh, I leave on Saturday. And uh, yeah, that that was a lot of fun. Uh, we had our first snowfall here in uh, in where I live, which is uh, Madison, Wisconsin. There you go. And uh, we had we had a few inches. It wasn't they they said four to six here, but it turned out I think it was like two to three. This is still shovelable, so and that's a word shovelable. So uh, yeah, we uh, I, uh, everything has been going good. My back's actually been doing a lot better, which I'm really happy on. But uh, as for wearables, uh, um, got some good news coming down the pike. I can't talk about just yet. Although, if you watch the pre-show, you got you got an idea of what I was talking about. But uh, the whole thing is, uh, we've got a couple new sponsors coming on, and then of course I I uh, secured for CES. So here's what we're gonna what I'm gonna do. And Luke, you know, if you want to get a plane ticket and join me, you're more than welcome to. But uh, Ooh. Consumer Electronics Show is coming up in January, and of course that also means there's a lot of startups. It means there's a lot of a uh, lot of different companies, and a lot of those companies use uh, wearable are, are dealing with wearable technology. And so uh, then they even have uh, in the Venetian last year, all of the those companies were there, and I'm guessing that they're going to be there again this year. So. Uh, I'm going there for a client, and uh, I'm going to be talking, uh, podcasting on another day for a another conference that kind of attaches to CES because everybody's in Vegas at that time, so it, it just makes sense. Um, but uh, I will be spending some time. I'll try and get a couple interviews with wearable technology companies, and hopefully that will be part of the the following monday's show but we'll see what happens and so but i will be at the uh, consumer electronics show 2016 as always and um, i'm also working on getting to nam that's the uh the uh national association of uh, music uh, i can't remember it's nam <laughs> n-a-m-m so uh, that's that's what's happening. But uh, the big trip right now is uh, in uh, two weeks, uh, going to Jolly Old London, and or actually this Saturday, getting on a plane going to Jolly Old London, London, England, and that'll be a lot of fun. So, have you ever been to London, Luke? I have not been to London. I'm kind of jealous that you get to go. But have you ever be been really to cool. France? That'll be really cool. I'm excited for you. Have you ever been to France? 
I have been to France, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that ruined that joke. <laughs> Um, I no, not I seen the, London, but I have seen France. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the, uh, of course, the things that happened in Paris, um, just completely horrific. And we didn't oh, talk yeah. about it last week. And, uh, you know, uh, I, we were plant Jennifer and I were, were, were thinking about going to Paris while we were taking our little four day vacation after the, cause I'm going for a conference and, uh, we decided not to because of all the unrest there. But uh, they were even on high, high alert, in, especially in Belgium, uh, yesterday because of uh, some stuff that Anonymous and the second... Uh, what's the second group? It's uh, the Ghost something or other? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, there, there, there's a... I guess a person from Anonymous broke off and created another group because this group works closer with the governments. And, uh, and they've been talking about some attacks that they've thwarted. And something that was supposed to happen yesterday didn't happen. So, I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is not a good time over there. So our thoughts go out to all the people in Paris. And if I could speak French properly, I would I would say that in French. But uh, I'm not even going to try and butcher that language. So, um, but uh, you know, stay safe, be safe out there, and go mm -hmm. from there. So, all right, let's pay some bills. Because that's what we do is we pay those bills. And, of course, our friends over at Cashfly are the people that uh, that pretty much uh, take care of our uh, our RSS bandwidth. So you you might watch this on on YouTube, over at YouTube.com forward slash This Week in Glass. But you can also go to iTunes and pull that from there. And, of course, we need a place to host the file uh, so you can get the audio and the video version. Uh, so that's where Cashfly comes in. Cashfly. So basically what happens is there's CDN, a content delivery network that hosts my files and then when you're at when you ask for them they will pull them. So if a one person or a 100 people or a 1000 people are downloading this show right now, then uh, you're not going to see any lag because they've got, you know, they're they're set up for that type of bandwidth uh coming through. So and and it's for any podcaster out there whether you're doing video, whether you're doing audio, whether you're hosting files or, or putting uh, images on it so your your website doesn't get overloaded with images or anything like that. That's where Cashfly comes in. They've got a 14-day free trial, one terabyte. You can check it out over at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y.com, Cashfly.com. And, of course, uh, you know, we've got our deals over at uh, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals, wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. And I made sure that the uh, that the deals segment, our deals part, is still up there. And I also made it, some people have been trying it with a capital D as opposed to a lowercase d, and for some reason that doesn't work. But I fixed that now, so uh, with the new website. Uh, so now if you go over to wearabletoday.com forward slash deals, you can get yourself some great deals on uh, on wearables. Great for Christmas presents alike, like the Samsung Gear Fit or the Garmin Vivifolt Volt Fitness Band or any of these uh, any of these great devices. There's the Motorola. It's at $108. It fluctuates. So if you're looking to get yourself a great wearable, you've got the Moto 360 on, right, right Luke? Right here, yes. There you go. Ba boom So you highly recommend that watch? Oh, yeah. I wear it all the time, actually. Yeah, there you go. So check it all out. That's over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. Um, you can also leave a tip over at paypal.me forward slash Jeff Powers. And uh, you know, it's actually for us. Don't worry. I'll, I'll give Luke 10% of 15% of 50% of 3% of 2% of 8%. And of course, which is pretty good. Yeah, definitely. And of course, we're a proud member of the Maker Max community, which basically means that uh, uh, you know they they help with the ads on here um, and getting you better ads, so you can watch you know maybe the new Star Wars trailer. So I don't know, um, but you'll also there's also other places that you can watch this this show. Um, it does do they do do some uh, distribution, and then of course, Luke, you want to talk about uh, about something with uh, your with your company, I guess it's called. Yeah. So I also, uh, also uh, run the website, big dot com. 
uh, for all your big letter shirt needs. So if you need to spell something out with a big group, head over to biglettershirt.com. There's a special coupon code you can put in, WEARTECH, which will give you 10% off any order. No limit on that. Yeah. I was, I was trying to pull something up here. It's not working. Come on. <laughs> You, you know, you know, okay, I'll I'll pull that out. So, um, <laughs> there it is. Because I, I saw it, I saw it on your uh, on your Facebook page. Where is it? Yeah, I can't find it now. Oh, there it is. Oh. So it's this picture right here. Oh yeah, there you go. Who's so the there were some there were some big letter shirts that I made up for uh, going to see Weird Al. So yeah, oh. biglettershirt.com. dot com. Use code WearTech for ten percent off. There you any go. Any order. All right, there you go. So, all right, and of course, uh, you can find us on the regular channels. Go over to twitter.com forward slash wearable today, facebook.com forward slash wearable today, youtube.com forward slash this week in glass. I can't change it. So, uh, and uh, YouTube, I've been thinking about changing it, but w if we change it, what happens is we lose all our fans. They have to go to it yeah. and they have to resubscribe. So, uh, and of course, we've got so many people watching the live stream right now. It's crazy. You know, the chat room's going crazy somebody mm -hmm. said hello mm -hmm. somebody else said hello what? there um what? somebody said are you there. ready yeah somebody gave a little smiley face it, it's just it's crazy it's just crazy so yeah we do this live every single monday 9 p.m of course uh in two weeks uh when i will be back from jolly Old london and uh we'll go from there and uh yeah so i need to reload that page Everything's going to heck in a handbasket, so let's just move on. Let's go into the segment we call Fund Me. Check it out. Cha -ching. Cha -ching. There you go. Let's check it out. This is uh, called Figment VR, and basically what this is... Oops, let me pause this. We had some technical problems there, but we've got it. I think we got it fixed. Uh, it's Figment VR. It's basically... I wish they would. this would stop playing. Um, and basically what it is is a case that turns into a 3D uh, device. So we'll scroll down a little bit. You can see the picture right there. So um, it's already been funded. I mean, it's it's got 50 days to go, and it's it's hit its goal of $75,000, but it's got a lot of great stuff here um, that you can, you know, it's in, in a great investment if you're doing 3D, um, if you're doing 3D uh, wear, wear tech type stuff with your phone. So basically, it's a case you just put it on there. It flips over the uh, phone, and then you you know just like with cardboard, you look into it and go from there. Very amazing. Um, and of course, I think they'll have their own software, so you can watch that. Um, have you taken a look at that uh, at all, Luke? Yeah, I did. Uh, right now, it looks like it's iPhone six and six S only. Um, I'm sure that has to do with the various form factors of lots of other devices that it's it's kind of a pain to try to make something that fits every Android device because they're all a little different. Um, so right now it's iPhone only, um, but a really neat idea. Okay, cool. I don't think we can, uh, there's not much more to talk about. I mean, it's just, it's a great yeah. funding uh, uh, and, uh, and it gets you in the idea of, you know, uh, different types of cases there. There's there's a good yeah, picture of the case. It's a much smaller version than say Google Cardboard or something, and it's something that you could just carry around with you all the time. So if you wanted to use it yeah. or show it to somebody, like it's a lot easier. So I, I like that idea. Um I really still like the um the VR one. The one that that we were sent, the uh the Go four D one that you take and you put your phone into. Yeah. And I like this one. You know, this one works with any phone, but you have to, you know, this is as small as it gets and then you got to carry it around with you. Yeah. You know, wherever you go or put it in its little but, travel but case. But they gave you a nice little travel case. And, and so yeah, that was, so that's, that's nice. Cool. I'm going to have to remember to take that with me on, um, you know, to Thanksgiving so that people can look at some other VR stuff. It'll be neat. There are a couple other things that I'm I'm not sure about on this case. Like for instance, um, the the lenses are pretty much unprotected. So if from I don't think that they close in. I don't think anything closes on top of it. In fact, oh, this is a perfect example. This person has 
this the, they're using it as a uh, as an iPhone stand, which I guess is an on uh, an option. But mm-hmm. you see how the optical lenses are sitting right on the wood of that table. So does that mean that that you could scratch this uh, the lenses really easy or or whatnot? Uh, you know that 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 concerns me a little bit. But you know, uh, it's it's about it's about being able to see what. Uh, what's uh, something in a virtual reality session and of course not having to carry something like this around and, and so that, that's pretty cool um yeah. so and of course yeah. like i said it, it's uh it's already hit its uh, seventy five thousand dollar model and and a lot of uh let me go back to the top here wow this computer is just acting really wonky today um yeah, they, their forty-nine dollar pledge area has already been uh, has already been taken uh, for the early bird iPhone six success, but uh, you and the six plus success plus, but for fifty-five dollars you can get the the iPhone six and success. So it's basically the same thing. And the phone, it, its regular price will be seventy-nine dollars. So if you want to check that out, we've got that link over at it's a kick, Kickstarter. We've got that link over at the show notes, so you can check that out from there. All right, very cool. All right, let's move on. Let's go into a segment we call "Around the Medical." F- no, that's the wrong one. Around the medical front. Beep 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 beep. Wow. <laughs> Because I did big news little arms for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, cardiologist, do you want to read this one or should I read this one? Sure, I can I can take this one. Take it away. So this is all about um, some cardiologists in Poland who use Google Glass to help with a coronary procedure. So normally they would use screens around the operating room to look at uh, some different models. Uh, but this one actually displayed the 3D models on Google Glass Using some cu- using a custom app developed by the University of Warsaw, so it was an early trial of the app. It wasn't something that was um, being made publicly available. It was really more of a proof of concept created by the university. Uh, but it does show that you can be really successful using some sort of heads up display. So uh, the the article goes into. Uh, uh, some more points from the doctor about how it was much more convenient and uh, they thought that it was just quicker to do a lot of stuff, which, you know, when you're doing a (laughs) coronary, uh, like a bypass or any sort of thing like that, like, you know, time is of the essence. And uh, there there was some stuff in there about accuracy too, how they think it was more accurate because they were able to look at those models maybe more closely or or more quickly. Uh, They didn't have to, um, you know, they didn't have to rush because it takes so long to look at everything. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it was, and they didn't go into a lot of detail. Yeah. Obviously, you couldn't watch the entire procedure or anything, but um, it sounded like it was a very good thing in their mind. Okay. Well, I can kind of see that now, uh, uh, putting on my Google Glass here, um, and where, you know, I could be, like, I'm looking at my, uh, I'll look at the computer screen here. Um, so, and, and, of course, Glass being uh, the let me get it in the right spot there. There we go. Uh, so it's really just a flick of the eye. So yeah. I could be working on one thing and then just look up for a, a brief second and go from there. So, uh, I don't, yeah, I could see that. The only thing I, I, I might get a little distracted from is the single eye thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then the refocusing uh, from, you know, because I'm guessing that this is a... This is small work, you know, uh, right here. Yeah, pretty precise. And looking up here, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV, that's for sure. But uh, I'm, I'm wondering how that would go completely on there. But an interesting, interesting thought uh, on this. And, and, of course, we'll see, you know, is it because of this version of Google Glass? Excuse me. Is it because of this version of Google Glass, or will the new version of Google Glass change the the parameters so they can't uh, they can or can't use it? We don't yeah, know. I don't that's, know. That's not. I mean, an, it, they can't answer that question, of course. But yeah, yeah, it could be that there's a version with an optic and a version that's just audio. Um, they did say that the voice recognition was a big deal because they were able to 
you know, control it and go through the app without having to touch things. Yeah. And we've talked about that before many times about how the the sanitary aspects of that, of not touching a lot of stuff when you're doing an operation probably makes things not only safer for the patient, but also quicker because you don't have to worry about, oh, I touched this. Now I got to wash my hands or change my gloves or do something else. So being able to do things without touching anything probably saves time as well. Yeah. And in fact, they have an, uh, they have a quote here. Uh, they basically said, this is amazing. Can my, my department can have 10 come on x-ray filter lenses and super cool. It's a translation, so it's not perfect, but, uh, mm-hmm. um, we'll, we'll see what happens if they continue to use Google glass. Maybe they'll end up using uh, virtual reality of some sort and go from there. But, uh, especially since Google glass is now defunct and Google glass two may be coming and may not have a lens to it on some versions so yeah yeah um which confusing but we'll we'll move on from there so uh we'll have the link in the show notes if you are interested in that article right there which which is pretty interesting article i don't mean to make it sound like it's not interesting that's for sure all right let's move on to our featured image here or our featured uh article here and this is this is really cool because you know, I can't wait for that day that it's happened. You know, even as a kid, I kind of dreamed, you know, because I haven't had, you know, the best feet for shoes, you know, uh, always had to find bigger shoes. And, and yeah, now I'm I'm settled in and, and I have wider feet and I have my new balances on because they're a wider foot shoe. But I always wanted to have that custom shoe and I was never a Birkenstock type person. So uh, I always wanted to see what would happen with custom shoes. And now 3D printing is going to have have that happen. Well, you know, 3D printing, they'll print a shoe that uh, it's still lots of growth in there. But if you think about it, a shoe that fits your feet can be and it can be designed completely by you or completely by somebody that you, you end up paying for uh, that works for your foot it has so many benefits. Um, and of course, uh, it's something that that takes more than just a 3D printer. In fact, uh, we we talked about the Glowforge a few weeks ago, if I remember correct, uh, which is a laser etcher that's now affordable. So um, basically, what you do is you make the the, the shoe out of the leather based uh, 3D paste material, whatever that is, um, and then you make the basic shoe and you make the you make the sole, and then you go and you have your your feet molded. And then those those feet molds then get converted into something that can then be etched out to laser uh, point precision. And then you basically have a sole that fits your foot. You have a shoe that fits your foot. Um, and the printer could just be belting out shoes for the rest of your life. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what type of cost that would be. But uh, it would, and, and you don't even need to have a 3D printer or etcher for that. Companies such as New Balance, as Adidas and Nike, are already working on 3D printed shoes. And I'll probably see a lot of that at CES uh, coming in January. Um, but New Balance is working on a shoe that's going to be available in April for the Boston Marathon on a limited uh, amount at this point, a limited edition shoe. Um, with a printed midsole. So the rest of the shoe is not printed from what I understand. Just the midsole is printed. So it's far from a fully printed shoe, but not too far off. So that's pretty cool. Another great advantage to the whole technology is making your own smart shoe. And you can figure out where you put your sensors. You can set it up so, you know, you know, because, you know, I buy... I buy, my foot is supposed to be 10 and a half extra wide. I always buy 11s because they kind of fit a little bit better than 10 and a half. I always feel like my toes are pushing on the edge there. So yeah, the sensors, of course, would be placed for a person with an 11 wide foot. And I don't have an 11 wide foot. So I can actually put the sensors in where I need them to put them in. So if I build it or I have somebody else build it, I have a shoe that's going to be perfect, attaches to whatever app I use, and gives me as best a number as possible. And I think that's the, the coolest thing about this whole 3D printed revolution, um, especially with WearTech, is the fact that, you know, 
things like shoes, which you thought, no, I'll just go down to the shoe store and get a pair of shoes. It's totally going to be redefined in the next five years. And it, it's just amazing. So, um, thoughts? Uh, I think that this is a huge deal uh, as far as providing custom stuff. Uh, that's really been what the uh, 3D printing revolution has promised is customized you know, products uh, and the, they're no more expensive to make, you know, a thousand that are the same or to make a thousand different ones that are customized to a thousand different people. You know, if you're 3D printing them, it's the cost is all just about how much time and material you use printing it. Yeah. Um, it's really neat. The article that you link to on 3dprint.com shows this self-assembling shoe where uh, you kind of talked about this, how it has different materials in it. What I thought was really fascinating was they're using the properties of fabric itself, where if you stretch the fabric out and then 3D print on top of that, the fabric will try to, you know, come back together because of the, the natural, you know, elasticity of it or, you know, however that fabric is made. Yeah. Uh, you know, some fabric stretchier than others, but, um, you know, it'll come back together and the the parts that have been 3d printed form kind of this rigid area where those parts of the fabric can't come back together so it kind of will uh uh not extract but contract is the word i'm looking for contract between all of the 3d printed areas and what they show is this shoe kind of forming itself up like it was printed out flat mm -hmm. and then when you release the tension it all you know contracts back up and now it forms this shape it was not a great looking shoe that looks like something that you know you would go buy at a store but it definitely had the shape of a foot maybe it would be more ergonomic yeah. uh, in fact i don't well, know it's, it's what they're it's what they're calling the minimal shoe and it was just basically one design it, you know because they, they made versions where you would end up having to put it together but i think this is just a one piece yeah. shoe and I think that it's, you know, and it's a great proof of concept and you could do it with just parts of a shoe. You could have multiple pieces like that, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting to me how combining a, just a couple of cheap technologies, you know, fabric isn't real expensive or, you know, there's a lot of fabric out there that's pretty cheap and 3D printing is pretty cheap, especially if you just print a thin layer. So you can make up something very shoe-like for very, very cheap uh, with just a few cents worth of 3D printed plastic and a you know, a, a dollar's worth of fabric or less and um, get something, something usable. Yeah, that's, uh, that's true. They have a video here on the shoe and I'm not going to show it because one, this computer is acting super f finicky for some reason. And two, of course, there's, there might be some copyright issues. So uh, in the link, go down to the bottom, it's going to show the upper sole, upper and sole of the active shoes. And you can watch the, the video. There's just, they're Vimeo videos. And I'll show you a little bit more on that. And yeah, this, this computer, I probably need to reboot it or something. Anyway, uh, really cool stuff. And then, of course, this is all done over at MIT. So they're, they're working on this constantly and doing that. But let's, let's talk a little bit about the actual, uh, let's say five years from now, they, they've done some perfection on the shoe. And you go to a shoe store. And because I just went to the shoe store, we're going to London. I bought a brand new pair of shoes to walk around in. Um, and uh, it's not going to be the same shoe store anymore because, yeah, you'll have the areas where there's going to be shoes. Then you're going to have an area where they can make a shoe for you. And they'll have an area where it'll they'll just be 3D printing shoes, I would guess, right? Yeah, I could, I could see that happening. Uh, major retailers, I'm sure. Um, and, you know, high-end retailers that are looking for that custom experience where, you know, like, yeah, if you're a tourist and you're like, you're there for a day, you probably don't have time to get your foot scanned, get a shoe made up. I mean, maybe if they mail it to you later, you could do something like that, you know, but maybe you want, if you want to come back and try it on, um, that'd be a lot harder to do if you're only there for a day. But if you live in the area, if this is your local shoe store, oh yeah, I could see them. They could have your foot on file and then you could just order a new shoe yeah. and, you know, this style. And so it's like, oh, yeah, just, you know, as long as you're an adult and you, you're very confident your foot hasn't changed too much, 
we can just use the foot profile foot scan we have on on hand and we can um on hand no actually on foot and we can print you off a new shoe new model you know new new design or you loved your last shoe so much we'll just print you off another one um so there's a lot of really neat really neat opportunities and possibilities i see yeah and it's not it's not really that far fetched it's all possible today it's just a matter of you know how practical it is to get it all implemented yeah how how the uh, how the material will work how the material will wear i mean if if i print up a pair of shoes and they only last a week then it's not worth it but um this is just basically and you saw a little bit of the video uh, as much as i could really show uh, they were mm -hmm. printing up the fabric, and now they're they're cutting the the fabric, and they're putting it around the shoe. Um, it looks like it looks like the mesh material, like you get in a uh, uh, Asics or a uh, uh, you know a running shoe or something like that, um, and uh, or or actually make a whole bodysuit or you know socks and pants and and everything like that. It's a pretty interesting material. Um, they have it all shaped up. And, and let me, uh, I bet you I could show this right there. There's the, uh, there's the shoe right there. It's just basically the shell. And, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And, and of course, like I said, this, this technology, you can't go out to the store and just do it right away. And if, if I was to 3d print, if I had a 3d printer to do that, um, it, it, it once again, it would probably be a shoe that would just fall apart within a week or something like that. So it's not perfected. But it's not too far away either, and that's what's really cool about that. Yeah, so, and you know these are all early things. These are not, you know, yeah. These are experiments, and maybe people will say, "Well, I don't really want the outside to be three D printed, but I do want the sole to be three D printed." You know, or I want the yeah, you know, the the insole that I actually, you know, stand on. That's what I want to be three D printed because that that can be conformed to my exact foot. So. You know, the, these are all very early. Yeah. Early, well, it's uh, like a, it's like I said, it's three D printed and laser etched to to yeah. get that that preciseness when it comes to uh, oh, yeah. some, somebody's soul. So, and you just made shoes technically, and on, on your C three PO uh, outfit. Yes, I did. I finished them like they were. I bought the plastic already shaped, and those those were just the top parts. Yeah, those so the, technically, the those were like parts. spats. More than anything, yeah, I probably that's yeah. probably a better term. For but you know, it, it would, if you had the opportunity to actually make the whole shoe, you would do that, right? If I was fairly confident that I knew the process, yeah, like, I think I think this idea is pretty neat. Like, yeah, three D printing some soles for them, definitely something I'd be interested in. Oh yeah, I, I know I would be because then you you'd make something that could conform to your foot. So you could stand a C3PO all day and not, you know, well, you'll still have fatigue from standing, but not as bad as if you were wearing a pair of, I don't know, Chuckies or something like that. Exactly. Something, uh, something more form fitting or, you know, supports in the right area and pressure points or whatever we talk about. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So I'm just checking to see if there's any questions. Unfortunately, no, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all about the shoes and it's very important because good shoes make the man and as cliff clavin said it all come back it all comes back to the shoes mm -hmm. exactly so all right Bird i got a cough really quick hold on <coughs> excuse me luke why don't you tell everybody where they can find you so you can find me all over the place you can find me on twitter at luke luca right here uh you can find me on google plus google.com slash plus luke wallace Yes, Birdie. You can find Birdie at birdie at wearabletoday.com. Yep. She says, yes, you can email me. And uh, you can email me, luke at wearabletoday.com. Or you can find me over at bigletter.shirt.com if you need a big letter shirt. Uh, remember, use code WEARTECH for 10% off. And of course, you can find me over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. Uh, Twitter handle Geekazine, Geekazine, gmail.com. Jeff at wearabletoday.com. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, and, and of course the new Twitter. Oh yeah. Uh, all the, all the socials, twitter.com forward slash wearable today, facebook.com forward slash wearable today, youtube.com forward slash this week in glass. 
this week in glass. So once again, the show notes uh, next week, I will be in London and uh, no show the following week. I, we will, Jennifer and I will technically still be in a London. Well, we will be in London, not technically, but we will still be in London. Uh, and we, it's technically a mini vacation for me. Um, although I'll, I'll definitely be doing some extra videos because heck we're in London. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, so we'll be back in t three weeks which will be, what is that, uh, the 14th of December. So you can put it in your calendars now, the 14th of December. And then uh, let's, let's see, let's get the, the show. So we'll have one on the 14th. Uh, 21st, are, are you good with the 21st, Luke? Or any problems there? Uh, I should be able to do that. So the week of the 14th, so our next show will be the week that Star Wars comes out. So that'll be, oh, that'll be the big, big show. Yeah. And then the Monday after that will be the Monday after Star Wars has come out. And so I will be dead tired because I am <laughs> doing a lot of stuff that weekend. But, so uh, and we'll, maybe we'll take off. We'll, we'll figure it out 21st or 20th. But we'll definitely be back on the 14th of December with another show. Another episode of Wearable Today. So thank you very much, Luke, for, for coming to this. Uh, we'll see you in three weeks. And we'll, yeah. Bertie, we'll see you in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's like I don't. I don't know. She. She's. She's checking her schedule. Should we? She's should like, we give, should we give this a try? Should we see if this happens. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Oh work. no. Oh, so close. Maybe next time. Um, Maybe next time. So. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, th for listening. If you haven't subscribed over on iTunes, please subscribe over to iTunes. Thanks to Cashfly for the RSS bandwidth. And, of course, uh, audio and video version you can get. Uh, and uh, let me know if there's any problems with the new site or uh, any of the uh, transmissions or anything like that. And, of course, YouTube.com forward slash This Week in Glass. Thanks a lot for watching. We will see you next time on another episode of Variable Today. Until then, you guys geek out and take care.